Hello and welcome back. I'm going to be going over a new series with you guys today. It's called Strength Hacks History. The first installment is going to be about the first barbell ever invented. So pretty much expect, you know, just me to cover a couple articles with you guys, take a little bit of a deep dive and, you know, explain some cool things that not a lot of people are talking about, you know, things that happened, you know, probably a couple hundred years ago that are forgotten and taken for granted. So I'm going to start here on this uh, second paragraph. The first one was pretty much just a bunch of fluff. So as you can read along with me here, strongman Eugene Sandow. Um, he was a pretty amazing guy. Uh, let me scroll up here. You can see this little flyer that he put together with his circus crew. And he popularized an act called the Tomb of Hercules, where he would pretty much do like... Um, one of them back bridges, you know, where your hands and feet are on the floor and then you press and arch your back and they would lay a plank across them and three horses would walk across that. And these guys tended to one-up each other, you know, as typically men do when they're competing. So this guy named uh, Sigmund Breitbart, I'm gonna guess that's his name. So he would take the act even further and they would put uh, one of them motor drone you know, uh, spheres across them where the motorcycles ride in there, they spin around in circles. And he would have two bikes and two bikers in there on top, you know, in that big metal cage. And uh, they would put that on top of him while he was in the back bridge position. Okay, so uh, just a bunch of filler information. Um, you know, not really what I'm looking for. If you want to read this stuff, you can. But I'm just going to try to stay on the topic of the first barbell. So it says here that. Others were looking to change the nature of fitness from doing, you know, uh, big spectacles that require a lot of, you know, planning and setting up, and they wanted something more practical, so they started trying to invent uh, concepts around physical fitness within the home. So, from what I'm reading here, there was a guy named Alan Culvert, and he did not like that a lot of the strongman's uh, circus spectacles, you know, that they were exactly that, circus lifts. They had uh, misleading equipment that made these people look a lot stronger than they actually were. Now, they are very strong, but when you're doing a, a silver dollar deadlift, you know, those boxes look huge, but there may not be a whole lot of weight in there. And it's hard to justify, you know, today we have the calibrated plates. Everyone knows how much they weigh based on the color, and they are you know, made to be that specific weight, you know, there's no variance as with a uh, standard non-calibrated plate where it can be anywhere from 43 to 45 pounds. But for example, with these silver dollar deadlifts, you know, these boxes might look huge and look like they weigh 600 pounds on each side, but in reality they may only weigh 300, 400 pounds, which is still a very impressive feat of strength, but the, the way they can mislead people was... Um, pretty intense back then. So this led uh, Mr. Culvert here to invent the plate-loaded barbell that we all know and love today. So from what I'm reading here, it looks like the first barbells appeared in the 1860s in European weight rooms, having evolved from the dumbbell design. Um, they used dumbbells previous to that, and I'll have to make a video in the future on the first dumbbell ever. But, you know, in the 1860s, these barbells they were using, they were preloaded, kind of like uh, these easy bars you see on the racks today. You, there's no spin locks or clamps. You can't change the weight on there. They're all preset weights. So, looks like in 1908, Alan Culvert created the Milo Triplex Bar, which was the first ever plate-loaded adjustable barbell. Now, this is huge because it allows people to scale the weight on the bar according to their level of skill. Say there was someone that was very weak and frail, they didn't make any, you know, 10-pound barbells back then, or, you know, 25, 30-pound, even just 45-pound. Uh, a lot of the fixed barbells were a lot heavier, and that kind of restricted access to new people. And it looks like we're coming to a wrap on the first article here. They just wrap it up with the story of... Milo, the famous Greek wrestler, and uh, pretty much how he would lift a calf every day and the calf would get heavier. You know, I'm sure everyone has heard this story, but that is the foundation for what we call progressive overload today, where you start with a 45 pound bar, move to a 50, 55, 60, and so on until you stall, and then you can start adding weight at a slower rate. So now I'll be moving on to the second article that's on barben.com. 
and I skipped the first few paragraphs. It was just a lot of fluff information. It didn't really pertain to the topic of the video. So as you can see here, um, with this paragraph that I'm starting on, they're talking about how militaries have been using uh, Indian clubs, you know, those 60-pound clubs that they swing around, as well as uh, prefixed dumbbells ever since the early 1800s, you know, to help them uh, prepare their bodies for the labor that is required in war. And these fixed implements that weren't very heavy, you know, they were relatively heavy, but you couldn't load it up to 200, 300, 400 pounds like you can with the barbells today. But there was little need for even going that heavy back then because with the way the world was, people really weren't that focused on building muscle. They just had to worry about surviving. And as you can see in this paragraph, it's talking about how the first public gyms, you know, the things that we know and love today, they didn't come out until about the mid-1800s because before then, not many people had the time or the interests or the money to dedicate to heavy training you know they were focused on just trying to pro provide a uh, you know living for their family and keep everyone fed now there's not any official records but they are saying here that some of the old school dumbbells uh, weighed up to 200 pounds a piece which is pretty cool because that's really on the high end of what you'd even see today there are not many gyms that have 200 pound dumbbells i think there may be one set of uh, 300 pound dumbbells uh, golden ones out there but I may be wrong about that. So this article is kind of contradicting the other one. They're saying that it's difficult to pinpoint the exact man or woman that was responsible for creating the first modern heavy barbells. Whereas in the other article, it said it was in 1908, I believe, with Milo. So it says whatever they can do is highlight that the barbell did become insanely popular around the late 1870s but it looks like uh, that does fall in line with the history of the other article as you can see these barbells are fixed at the end they got the globes and you know they're not plate loadable the uh, adjustable barbells that we see today so uh, from what I'm reading here with these globe barbells you know the prefixed weight you could adjust them, but you'd have to either pour like sand or dirt or stone into the globes to fill them up. So that's not a very reliable method, uh, unless you were measuring everything by you know this, using the same bucket every time. You could track everything by you know one bucket or two buckets, and you could prog progressively load that way. But you know that is a pretty big hassle compared to the plate loaded method. So. Uh, as you can see, they, as we scroll down, they show this picture of one of the Milo barbells. You can see some of these, uh, these are some of the first plates ever. They look pretty cool. Honestly, I would love to see a set of these in person. Okay, so it looks like there is some controversy here. Um, it says around the same year where Mr. Culver invented the Milo complex bar, a German inventor by the name of Franz Veltum invented a disc loading barbell and this barbell was first marketed to German lifters in 1910 and it's impossible to prove whether you know Veltum or Culvert was aware of each other and they had very similar products so according to this article uh, they are not sure who invented the first loadable barbell you know with uh, plates slash discs now this part I actually find really interesting so it is saying that until around um, the mid 1910s that there were no barbell clamps so you know in this time period a guy named Edward Aston began marketing their own barbell clamps you know I'm sure they had people did makeshift clamps before but there was no official barbell clamp so there's probably a lot of people out there lifting with their plates or their discs on the barbell but they didn't even have it fixed to the barbell I'm sure the smarter people you know probably realized and rigged something up themselves and uh, according to this paragraph right here it wasn't until the late 1920s until, you know, the standard seven-foot barbell became a thing. Uh, before then, I guess, Veltum and the other guy, they would just make five-foot barbells, I'm guessing. Probably maybe four-foot or six-foot. There probably wasn't a standard, you know, like there is with the seven-foot length today. All right, and now it's moving on to the modern age. So, you know, that's really not the point of this video. Maybe I can cover, you know, some more... Uh, barbell information between the 1930s to 1970s in a future video comment down below if you'd like to see that thank you very much for watching the video 
Let me know if you enjoyed it by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel if you're not already. Have a great day.